video I will show you how to do robust linear regression in Python using the stats models module and for that we'll be using Python 2.0 as my IDE you can download Python from www.python.com you can download it for Windows you probably also want to download my project robust underscore linear underscore regression from the following github repo and the reason I like Python for this is that it allows me to separate my code into panels and I can navigate through my project like that. So what's robust linear regression? The idea of robust linear regression is to provide us with estimates similar to the ones we get when we use ordinary least squares for linear regression in the simplest scenario. But the idea is to provide us with robust estimates that do not change much if we have abnormal values or outliers. So let's see this simple scenario. We have the diabetes data set. So this is a, a very well known data set that comes from scikit-learn. What we will be doing here is just, we'll just work with one variable and my goal here is to, to get the ordinary least squared estimate, so OLS. As you can see in Python, I am separating my code here in the following way. So I am putting my my data preparation in here and then the model in here. But you can split it in, in any way that you want. Or maybe you can put everything into the same panel and that, that's absolutely fine. So bear in mind there are two ways of connecting the panels here in and out. So out means that everything that runs here will be fed into the next panel that is fed in. in. So here meaning that the variables diabetes x sample will be available here. So as you can see, I'm not defining diabetes x anywhere in this panel. It comes from this one. Of course, I could have another panel in here that could potentially be feeding other objects into this one. So in this case, anything that I, I variable that I define here, so for example, a equals 43, will be a, will be accessible in here. So here I will be able to use, for example, print A. This brings me to my next point. So there are three running modes in here. The first one, run only this one, runs only this panel. The second one, run up to here, means that it runs this panel that I have here, plus this one that I have here. So it runs everything that's, that's feeding the, the in part. The third running mode, maybe the most interesting one, run below, is if I run in here, it means, it means that this panel runs and then this one runs, which obviously can lead to very interesting, interesting scenarios because we could have two experiments here. So we could be doing some, uh, some test using different parameters for a model. And then we could, we could do something like this and then have our, our code in there. And then if we press here, run below, it means that these two panels will be will be executed. I will I will just clean everything just to start um, from scratch. I press run below. So here I have um, my results. What you can see here on the right are the uh, NumPy arrays that were detected in here. So all the all the available NumPy arrays are tracked for each panel, and you can see them here. So that's diabetes six. So it's 442 rows, one column, and then diabetes Y is a number array of zero dimension, uh, of 442 elements. And, and then for the second panel, you can see that I also have Y and X, which I obviously defined uh, in here. It is pretty cool when, when we have a very complex project with lots of panels and we want to track how the NumPy arrays change, so we can, we can use it for that. So anyway, what we can see here is that the, the coefficient here is 949 for x1. So that should be our, our coefficient. There are other things here, but I don't, I don't care. Which brings me to my next point. So what happens if we have contamination? So the idea of robust methods is to provide it with, with estimates that are very close to the, to the ones that would exist without any kind of contamination. 
So usually the contamination occurs for whichever reason and usually impacts a percentage of the observations, like 5%, 10%, 2%, maybe maybe even just a few observations, maybe three of them, as I have here. And what we have is that we have abnormal values that they're just crazy values, as I have here. My typical value for this data set is like 120, 150. So I shouldn't be observing any value like this. It's just, just crazy, very, very big. So let's assume that we do have indeed these, these three crazy values and let's just run everything below and see what happens. But before running everything below, let me explain what's below. So we have the standard regression. So I want to show you how how things change because of the outliers. As we will see in a minute, these results will be very different from the ones that I have uh, in here. And then the robust one, which uses the RLM function from the stats models API. So let's run everything. So as you can see, the, the coefficient did change a lot. So now we're in 787. So it really, really changed. However, let's see what happened with the robust one. So with the robust one, we get 975, which is pretty cool. Think about that. 975, it's very close to what we have here. So 949, so quite close. One thing that we can do in Python, if we want to uh, check the outputs from different panels and we just want to see them one next to each other, we can kind of copy like this. I will copy mine in here and you can put them together. You can obviously change the title in here. So this would be robust. This would be LM or OLS, let's call it OLS now outliers and we can see them here by the way we could also put the ones from the contaminated model with ordinary least squares put them maybe here and this is a nice way to see all the results um, next to each other and interestingly it's not just the x1 that that did change a lot. You can see that the constant here, the intercept, also changed. So the robust method correctly grabs it 152, but this one like got completely corrupted 166. Anyway, uh, we can also do another test. Um, out of curiosity, what would happen if we put, I don't know, eight, 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 even crazier values? We run everything again. So X1 is now 161. The results are pretty crazy. 161 against 975. So the ordinary least squares ones got completely corrupted. This is absolutely wrong. And, and the worst part is that we only changed three observations. So imagine we had changed like 30% of them or 10% of them. That would be an absolute disaster.